mud, mud. I love your sound. I'm absolutely, positively wild about mud. I can't go around. It's, it's mind blowing, and, and the evidence when you start thinking about. Oh, how all the kids' grandfathers and all the kids' grandparents, they'd say they had to work when they were kids, you know? Oh, I had to work when I was a kid. And you're like, well, you can't imagine your kid working now. And But you heard those stories. You hear them. You heard people talk about them. And once you hear this, you're like, wow, my gosh, this is like Twilight Zone stuff. You know what I mean? Children working way back in the day was very sad. Many great grandfathers and great great grandfathers and mothers did in fact work. Sad truth? It's still going on. So I I was I was stopping uh, with this topic when I you know uh, touched this swimmer topic because that sculptor uh, Galupkina was also making a bunch of uh, those kids crying kids like this like uh, those you know sculptures. Yeah. And I was like showing them and I was really crying because, you know, inside because it's really touched my soul. So I tried to imagine how it really was and I, you know. Anna Glubkina was a famous sculptor around the turn of the 19th century to the 20th century in Russia. She, however, is not necessarily famous for sculpting children, although she did have some child sculptures. It's just too many. It's too many kids. It's too many children. If they're like 20 fathers getting stripped in a month. When they're coming from where? And where's the parents really? for them? Um, and then that's every, every week, like sort of thing, over every month, really? over a period of years. And then really? in America, up through New York. The fuck is Flat Earth British talking about? Too many children? For what exactly? To work in factories? To sh ship on the orphan train? What the fuck is he talking about? We get all the newspaper articles, these homes for kids, these fondlings. Yeah, you want to look into them, man. They all get torched. They're all that same architecture. Um, one in New York, but the same one got torched twice with more in there. People are setting orphanages on fire in New York. What orphanage? Can you provide any fucking information? You're just talking and talking and talking and leaving all the fact gathering to other people, but you're not giving any facts to follow. I found one orphanage, the Colored Orphan Asylum, by just googling New York Orphanage Fire, and is this what you're talking about? I can't tell. Say something useful for a change. Um, and you look into the fires, and it's sort of, you can associate it with a covering over abuse, crimes and stuff, because all these places are tied in with it. But so like, uh, all that architecture, huge. And if you Google, um, or that, just that word, orphanage is fires. Um, the first thing that strikes you is like, Jesus, what's going on? Because there's so many. When I Google orphanage fire, which is a ridiculous thing to Google, by the way, two fires show up. One from, looks like, 2015 in Haiti, and one from 2017 in Guadalamala. Guada, Guada, Guadalamala, Guatemala, Guatemala, there we go. One from 2017 in Guatemala. That's it. That's the entire front page of Google when I Google orphanage fire. Not a whole lot of them. Not all because of to, to hide child abuse. Again, you're just making shit up. I wish these guys would take the time to actually explain something, which they never do, which I always complain about. Um, there's ones in America, there's like ones in uh, Thailand, there's like thousand. It's like you add all them up as well. I did a little tally on just what I was going to do a video, but I thought, no, that's just going to upset me. So it was like thousands of just all in like these orphanage fires. So that's tied in with these fires as well. The Baltimore fire, um, there was a huge, huge Tatarian type building, which was a, a orphanage, which had like, they don't talk about it, but it was full of kids in Baltimore. Look in, look, have a look, Richard. They were all in this orphanage, all a bit theft. Um, they had like this real weird funeral as well. They had a lot, a lot as well that they covered up and they burned these places up later on. They just tied in, it's dirty, dirty stuff going on. I would hate to be accused of taking their arguments out of context, but again, since their arguments are so ill formed and without any evidence, I'm left to just draw conclusions from the rambling junk they say. It seems as though Flat Earth British wants to connect orphanages in the 1800s and some fires they had 
with the Tartarian Empire, the Tartars, and their architecture. And somehow that link is bad and evil. I, I don't see what he's talking about. He's not providing any evidence. I'm not going to take his fucking word for it. The man... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to say. This is, again, one of those sentences that's just beyond rational thought. Also, too, you're hiding. You got you got people. Don't, these kids don't know where they came from. You know, all the genealogies is all screwed up and messed up. These uh-huh. people, they can't trace anything anymore. The hell does the genealogy have to do with anything? That's such a random thing to be concerned about here. In Russian fairy tales, we also we we always have like kids, mm-hmm. like kids, and no parents. They they only had grandparents, like grandfather and grandfather. You that, don't you yeah. No parents, like no parents. Always uh, a grandchild and grandfather and grandmother. That's it. Those stories like that, isn't it? I grew up with grew up with my grandmother. Like the little red riding hood. Do you know that story? Little red riding hood for them. Big bad wolf. <laughs> to visit her grandma's house. Yeah, we should, we should, we should, uh, you know, do a single one about fairy tales. And I mean, I you guys... Grimm's, I have done one on Grimm's. Amazing Grimm's Philip. Look at the Grimm's man. Yeah. So cold, man. What's going on? I mean, like Rupert yeah. Sporty, the woman in the tower, put it down there. Yeah. My, my grandma was reading me uh, little fairy tales of dreams, brothers. I'm a, I'm a big fan of it, and I'm, I don't know how much of it is. Apparently, these in-depth researchers don't know that the Brothers Grimm didn't actually write their stories. They merely catalog them. These stories have been around for centuries before. Any coding in the fairy tales would have been the result of the original authors in the 1200s, 1300s, 1400s, places like that. The Brothers Grimm didn't actually write any of them. And doesn't the fact that Little Red Riding Hood going to her grandmother's place contradict your argument when she's leaving her mother's house? Well, I mean, Phil, I'm doing a thing right now, too. I mean, fairy tale castles are real, come to find out. And uh, these fairy tale stories, come to find out, are showing up to be... You know, real too is uh, exactly. We're talking about fairy tale palaces, fairy tale architecture, fairy tale castles. That you know, you, you, mind blowing. It's mind blowing. You just blew my mind. Of course, some fairy tales discuss real world places. These things were written in the time of castles, so naturally you would expect castles. That doesn't mean the prince was once a frog. Yeah, it's just a symbolism, symbolism of information of uh, what the people could tell the kids so they can, you know, imagine something and it would be a great story. But well, actually, it could be meaning different things, like a dragon could be a jet fighter or right. you know, a witch could be just, you know, uh, somebody right. on, a, on a scooter, I don't know. If these people lived in a world with jet fighters and scooters, Why would they describe them to the children as dragons and witches? Were these kids somehow not part of this supposed advanced ancient society you claim once existed? Doesn't make any fucking sense. Oh, I'm gonna stop it right there so you can look at them. Look at the, yes, and I mean, we're gonna go over some photos too. This is in Thailand um, uh, somewhere. I forgot the actual name exactly where it's at. This is the head. Oh, uh, it's a horned serpent, an ancient horned serpent, and it's literally wrapped around this giant. And I spent like a, like an hour and a half look analyzing this thing, trying to figure out what the hell happened and what's going on. And if you see, you can see other photos. This serpent is biting this giant's hand, and these things were. If you look at the, um, these were very venomous. So I'm thinking they both killed each other. If you see his hand oh, wrapped around his neck. Like he choked the shit out of him. But it's too late for both of them because he's got injected in venom. That's gonna probably put him into cardiac arrest. And this guy's choked the fuck out. So let's finish playing this. It's a fake. It should come as a surprise to no one that I spent 
five seconds to Google the title of this video and found out that this is actually an artwork exhibit staged in Thailand. Check the comments down below. Check the uh, information page down below for a link describing this exact skeleton. These guys are idiots. They don't spend any time doing actual research. They just sit around circle jerk each other all day. It's pathetic. You do a little bit of research, they were poisonous. The horned serpent, okay? Right? So, and they have to be ancient because we're talking about ancient giants, okay? Brilliant deduction. High quality fucking research going on here. This is the horned serpent. So we know that the horned serpent and the ancients talked about the horned serpent, okay? It's a fake. And, and this just, it just, this is just more one out of many other proofs of giants. I'm a dumbass. <laughs> but that giant wasn't, he, that wasn't his cave. I, I think that he was a top. I mean, these guys were advanced. These guys were smart. It's a fake. And uh, he just got some bad luck. He got by himself or whatever. And uh, that big ass snake wrapped around him. Um, probably bit him at the same time. And, uh, you know, he did that, that giant broke his neck, uh, you know, strangled him. And at the same time, he must have died, suffered a heart attack from the venom that uh, was introduced to him. So you know. it's amazing how they can go on all these random fucking tirades about everything they can learn from the skeleton when it's just some artist exhibit. It's not real, but they didn't have the time. They didn't care. They don't want do actual googling for five fucking seconds they just accept everything that promotes their cause as legitimate and proceeds to inform the world about how smart and wonderful they are it's pretty fucking stupid